Hey guys, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can remotely access the desktop of your Raspberry Pi through a VNC connection. That is, you will not need to plug in a monitor, mouse, and keyboard, but instead just connect to it over your local area network. This tutorial is building upon the previous tutorial where I showed you how to set up a headless uh, Raspberry Pi. So I'm assuming that you've already downloaded and installed PuTTY. The first thing you're going to want to do is open up PuTTY. And here I have a session with a bigger font, so it's a little bit easier for us to read it. And you're going to want to log into your Raspberry Pi. So type in raspberrypi.local. And then type in your login name. It should be default Pi. And then your password will be Raspberry. Again, the password won't actually show up while you're typing. After you've typed it in, hit enter. And it will bring you to your login terminal. The next thing you're going to want to do is type in sudo raspi-config and scroll down to advanced options and go down to VNC and would you like the VNC server to be enabled? Hit yes and then it will say okay and then you go to finish and then once that's done type in sudo reboot. So this is going to take a little bit of time. While that's happening Open up your favorite internet browser and go to realvnc.com slash raspberry pi and it will take you to this site where you can get the VNC viewer. And this is a VNC viewer that is compatible with your Raspberry Pi. Download it and install it. I've already done so here. After a minute or so has passed, we should be able to log into our Raspberry Pi. And you can do so by typing in raspberrypi.local here and hit enter. And it'll connect to your Raspberry Pi. And yes, you'll want to continue. Again, your username is going to be Pi, and your password will be default Raspberry. Hit OK. And voila, we now have the desktop for our Raspberry Pi. And as you can see, this window is actually quite small. And if I were to blow it up, I can't blow it up. Huh. You can do this on the Mac side. This must be a Windows feature. So. Um, we can't blow it up, or there we go, we can full screen it. Oh, that's that's a lot better. There we go, stretching it. Isn't that beautiful? We can really see that the uh, the resolution of our Raspberry Pi here uh, display is actually quite pitiful. And this is something that we can change. So let's close this down and open up PuTTY again. And we're going to log into our Raspberry Pi. Uh, log in as Pi with our password being Raspberry. And then you're going to want to type in sudo nano. So sudo means that you're going to override any safeties. Nano is a text editor that comes pre-installed with the Raspbian distribution. And you're going to type in slash boot slash config dot text. And this is a configuration file uh, for your Raspberry Pi. Just scroll down a little bit and go down to here where it says HDMI group equals one HDMI mode uh, equals one. The first thing you're going to want to type in is HDMI underscore ignore underscore e did equals 0x a50080080. And what this does is it enables the ignoring of extended display identification data. That's what e did stands for. Uh, just in the event that your monitor can't handle it. And if your monitor can't, you might have some compatibility issues. So by doing this, it just makes it more accessible to more users. The next thing you're going to want to do is type in HDMI underscore group equals two. And this sets the output group of your, uh, of your Raspberry Pi to be DMT or display monitor timing. So I'm assuming here that you are going to be accessing your Pi from a computer. And that's why we're choosing HDMI group two. The next line you're going to want is HDMI underscore mode equals 85. And by me writing 85 here implies that there are 84 other options and potentially more. And there are more. 85 means that we're going to have a resolution of 1280 by 720 at 60 hertz. We could choose other definitions, for example, 1024 by 768 at 60 hertz. And that's done at mode 16. Mode 77 gives us 2560 by 1600 at 60 hertz. Now, just keep in mind that the higher the resolution you go, the um, 
slower your response is going to be because that means that your Pi needs to send more data over the network to get the same screen output. Once you've chosen your mode, hit Control and X, and then it will ask you, do you want to save it? And yes, you do, so hit Y. And then it will ask you what you would like to name the file. And we don't want to change the name, so just hit Enter. And there we go, we have it changed. So now that that's done, we're going to have to reboot our Raspberry Pi again with the command sudo reboot. This will close down our PuTTY uh, connection. And then after you have given your Raspberry Pi a moment to reboot, uh, open up your VNC viewer again and go to raspberrypi.local, hit enter. And then your password again is going to be raspberry. And here we can see that the resolution has improved considerably. It's still a small window because I'm on an enormous display here. Uh, and of course we can make it bigger. I just chose mode 85, but we can see it's looking significantly better than it did before. So there you have it, how to remotely access the desktop of your Raspberry Pi. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more tutorials like this, visit thezanshow.com.